Hello and welcome to our video number two in our Pygame RPG series. In this video, we'll be working on animating and adding in our player character into our game. Okay, so let's get right into it. There's a lot to add, the collision detection with the ground and everything. So let's just open up our game file here and run it once. Okay, great. Here we have our uh, background and our ground. Okay, now our job is to basically get, get the player over here and he needs to be able to walk on this ground and uh, he needs to be able to do other things like jump, for instance. So let's just, all, you know, we're going to do all that. I'll open up the player file over here where we'll begin coding. Okay, first thing to do is import Pygame. Okay. And make our player class. Uh, Pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. Make the init function. Let's take itself and let's take the starting position of the player as well. Okay, x and y. And what else? Self dot pause for the position. And here I'll create a vector object again. Pygame dot vector. Sorry, mat dot vector to vec. And the starting position will be this. Okay. And let's just quickly go here and create a render function first. Self and display and display dot blit. Okay, we're gonna pass in display into this, and we'll draw an image which I'll load up in a second and the position. Okay, so draw the image to this position. Now this image is going to be. Uh, let's take a look at that in a second. Let's go over to our image file and take a look at that. Mm -hmm. So I want the standing pose position, this one, okay, pointing to the right. So uh, let's go with that. Player underscore sprite and R. R is for right and L is for left, by the way. You need to have separate animations for both sides. So that's why I have them. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, of course, of course, this is not going to run, obviously, because uh, it's, um, this is the player file. We need to go back to the game file, and then we need to actually import this. And let's change up our import statement a bit. Let's say from player, import player. Okay, let's do it like that. And same, same thing for ground. So that way we don't end up uh, you know, importing anything else by accident. Okay, so let's go back down here and create our player. Player is equal to player. And what's the starting position? Something like uh, 200 on the X and 200 on the Y. Okay, that's good enough. Let's come down here and say player dot render and pass in display. Okay, now one more thing I want you to keep in mind over here. The reason we're rendering all this after the background is because in Pygame, things like sort of stack on, the, uh, stack on top of each other. And not just Pygame, actually. This goes for al almost anything. So basically, what happens is that you draw the background, then you draw the ground on top of that, then you draw the player on top of that. Now, if you drew the player first and then drew the background, background on top of that, you would basically uh, draw over the player. The player would be wiped out. You wouldn't see him. So basically, you need to be careful with the order of how you draw things, okay? Just keep that in mind. So let's run this. Okay, we have a slight error here. What's wrong with that? Let's see. Of course, I made, made that mistake again. I didn't do images. Okay, let's go back here and do that again. Okay, great. There's our player. Now, we can't control him yet. We can't move him any or anything yet. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. Okay, the first thing we'll do is add in some basic movement with the arrow keys. So back to the player. Okay, so we're gonna first gonna create some new variables. Okay, one for acceleration. Okay, and we'll just initialize this to zero. And we'll make a new one for velocity and initialize this to zero as well. And then we'll make some constants, okay? We'll set that, we'll set the acceleration to one 
and we'll set the friction to minus 0 0.1 okay so let's come back down here and make our move function okay we'll just take self as a parameter and then we're gonna take in some keys okay now before I do this I need to actually make another import okay remember that import I made earlier in the main game file well this is that okay we'll need this for the keys Okay, so over here I'm going to make a variable called keys and then call the pygame.key.getPressed function. Now what this does is return the list of all keys clicked in the game. All the keys currently being you know, pr pressed or held down. Now there's a really good video I made actually on keys that I advise you to go check out. Uh, it's in, again, it's in the description below. It actually shows you many different techniques and stuff. So let's just implement something simple over here. Okay, if the left key is pressed, then do this. Uh, otherwise, if the right key is pressed, do this. Okay, so that was simple. Now, now tell me this, uh, key left. We want to move the player now, right? So we could just do something simple like this. Adjust the position a bit by a certain amount, like maybe one pixel. And actually this is gonna be uh, minus, okay? Because remember, the X and Y values increase as, they, as you go, uh, as you move, move across the screen. The top, top left corner is zero, zero, and the top uh, bottom right corner is the max width and height. Okay, remember that. So yeah, self.pause, over here we'll increment it, okay? Now let's actually go and run this, okay? I'll go back to the game. I'll, uh, here I have player.move. I wrote this right now, actually. Uh, so we'll call this. And hold on, slider. Okay, silly mistake there. Let's just close that. Okay, and go back to player and fix that. And run this in the game. Okay, so let me try moving now. Okay, we can move. You can see that? It's really slow, but it, it's working. So. But the thing is, this is not the system that I want to go with. I want to actually implement something better, better than all this. Uh, this is something for acceleration, friction, and velocity. I want to implement these concepts. I want to implement these because, one, they're a lot more realistic. For instance, when I implement these, like I actually created the variables for that purpose up there, when I actually implement velocity and acceleration, uh, the player is not going to start off at full speed. He's slowly going to accelerate. There's going to be friction, so when you let go of the key, he won't immediately stop. He's going to slowly grind to a halt. And there's going to be a lot more cooler concepts, like we're going to, going to implement gravity, okay? So that's also going to be something really amazing, so we'll need acceleration for that. So for all these concepts, I've actually gone ahead and done all this, so which is why I'm not going to be using this simple system over here, okay? Instead, I'm going to be doing acceleration, okay? I want you to, that every, if the left key is pressed, then accelerate in the opposite direction, okay? Minus acceleration, okay? And over here, I'll, I'll do the same thing, but for the positive acceleration, okay? Now, see, I'm adjusting the acceleration here now. I'm not actually uh, changing the velocity or the position yet. So that's what we're gonna be doing right after I take into account friction. Now that sounds really complicated, but it's really cool as well. So there's going to be friction only in the x direction, okay? Because currently we don't really have anything for the y direction, and I don't think we would need to unless we were doing something really complicated like uh, the air resistance or something, which we're not doing. So this is uh, friction in the x direction for the ground, basically. So I'll do self dot vel, okay, which is velocity, multiplied by self dot friction. Now what this does here. Uh, this is, yeah, plus, okay? Basically what's happening here is that we're saying that multiply friction by velocity and add that into the acceleration, the in the x direction. Now this line is really important, okay? It has multiple you know, uses. There, it's here for multiple reasons. One, uh, if we did this, for instance, okay, you know what? Uh, to actually explain this, I need to write the next line, which is gonna be self.vel, okay? Is, is equal to self.vel plus self.acceleration, okay? Now, this is how acceleration works, right? 
as we accelerate, we keep adding the acceleration into the velocity, which is basically what's happening here. Now tell me, if we keep holding the right or the left key, don't you think we'll accelerate forever? We'll, like, we'll never stop, right? And that's a problem. So that's why we have friction. Basically, we're going to multiply friction by velocity. Why by velocity? It's because if we multiplied, if, or if, like, if we only subtracted the friction from the acceleration, then if the acceleration increased to like 20 or something and the friction was still like minus 0.1, that wouldn't really be effective, right? So what we're doing is that as the speed of the player increases, we're going to multiply it by the friction to get a value, okay? And this is useful because as the speed of the player increases, the friction will increase too. And this is actually a proper programming concept. Uh, sorry, not programming concept, I mean physics concept. Basically, the friction the amount of friction being applied on the object is going to change as, he, as, as it speeds up, right? So this is that concept. So like if the velocity is 10 and the, the friction is 0 0.1, right? Minus. So it will be minus, uh, minus 1. So then minus 1 will be subtracted from the acceleration. And if the velocity is 100, then basically minus 10 will be subtracted from the acceleration. So again, that's a really cool concept. And over here, it's pretty simple. We're just increasing the velocity. And finally, we're going to increase the position, okay? Now, this is also really important, and you might even recognize this, because this is a formula used in physics and kinematics. So, I'll just write it over here. You don't need to memorize this, by the way. You can just write this down, and we'll never be using it later, okay? We'll pretty much never use it later, uh, so you don't need to know it in that much detail. So, I'll write here, self dot uh, vel, right? Plus 0 0.5 multiplied by self dot acceleration. Did you recognize it? The 0 0.1 1 upon 2 multiplied by acceleration. So yeah, hopefully you did. At any rate, I think we're done here. Let's save this and go back to game. Okay, and in game, I'm going to write player.move. Okay, save and run. Okay, here's an error. Okay, I made a slight mistake there. Let's go back here, because actually it's velocity in the x direction, okay, save, let's come back here, run it, okay, again, another error, okay, another silly mistake, I did not include self over here, which I will do right now, back to the game, and hopefully third time's a charm, and, okay, well, he's moving, but it's a bit janky, I'm not sure why, It looks like we've made another silly mistake over here. I wrote self.pause is equal to this. This is not the case. I wanted to increment the change. Like if we move 10 pixels forward, I wanted to inc to add that into self.pause. So it's actually plus, okay? Again, save and run. There you go, woof, look at that. It looks good, right? Now watch this. Uh, okay. A side problem there because as I let go, he's continuously moving back and forth. Okay, that's, that's a side problem we need to fix. Okay, so this mistake was actually in this little line over here, I just realized, which I basically excluded because I thought it was completely related to gravity, but it turns out that it was actually important to other things besides gravity. Basically, the x component of the acceleration needs to be zero every time the move function is called. And why is that? Well, basically, uh, it's like this. You know how the player was moving back and forth? So the thing is, if we don't reset the acceleration to zero, when the keys are not being pressed, because if the keys are being pressed, the acceleration will just uh, set itself back to the normal acceleration value, okay? Uh, but if the keys are not being pressed, we want to reset the acceleration to zero, okay? Uh, again, it's pretty complicated, because the acceleration is still going to end up incrementing with the friction and velocity, okay, and that's all important to how it adjusts the speed and everything. So I advise you to actually sit down later and actually think about this, you know, carefully. Sit down, maybe print out those values, watch them change, okay? It'll help you understand how things are working better, okay? Or you can just uh, completely forget about any of this and just proceed and watch the video. Because, uh, well, you don't need to get into the nitty-gritty details of all this physics, okay? So let's run this code now, and hopefully this will be the last time we need to do it. Yep. There we go. Pretty good, right? Now, I'm going to include this link, this uh, code, in the description below. There'll be a download link. There'll maybe there'll be a link to the website. Okay, I haven't decided yet. 
but either way there will be a link in the description below which you can use to actually test out and you know run this code for yourself. So I actually advise you to do that. But just for now so let's just proceed with the video. I'm going to lower the acceleration value a bit to maybe 0 0.4 okay because I think the player was moving a little too fast. Uh, I need to run the game. So let's just try this out one, one more time. And by the way this might lag a bit over here because of the screen recording and everything but uh, it won't on your end okay because it, it's not from me really. So yeah pretty good. So what's the next thing that we should be adding? Or actually I think for now we should just end this over here and in the next video we can actually take a look at adding gravity and adding collision detection with the ground. And after that we'll take a look at movement animations, we'll add in moving animations for the player, he can actually move around okay and then we'll make the next video after that will basically be player attacking. We'll add the player attack, we'll add in yeah basically he'll gain the ability to attack and we'll add attack animations as well okay. So the next few videos are all about the player okay who is also our main uh, our main focus in this tutorial at least for in the first half anyway. So yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're interested in seeing more so subscribe and leave a comment any suggestions or contributions are appreciated. So yeah see you in a later video.